Welcome to day six in 30 days of prayer for our children. And I'm so excited to get to this topic that we're going to be praying for our kids. We're going to be praying that our children would have the heart of David. And I tell you, the story of David gives me so much hope because he was one of the most sinful people in the Bible when you think about it. I mean, he committed adultery, murder. He was gluttonous in many ways. I mean, just very, very sinful in many ways. And yet the thing that he's remembered for is being a man after God's own heart. And I just believe that that came from a deep love for God and just a desire to please God, not for kudos, but a desire to, um, to connect with God. And I just, in 2 Samuel 24, 24, um, it's kind of a long story, but the, the gist of it is that uh, David was going to sacrifice burnt offerings to God. And he approached this man, Arauna, and wanted to um, basically have a place to worship God, have an altar, have burnt offerings. And Arauna was like, oh, king, I will give you this stuff. You know, I will donate this stuff for you. And David said, no, I insist on paying you for it. This is from directly from 2 Samuel 24, 24. But the king replied to Arauna, no, I insist on paying you for it. I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen, and he paid 50 shekels of silver for them. And so here is David. And he could very easily have just gone through the motions and sacrificed to God, but he wanted it to count for something. He wanted, and I believe that that translated to his life. He wanted his life to be a living sacrifice. And yes, he gave into temptation of the flesh. Yes, he did some detestable things, but he always repented. And, and some of the repentance and the, the sorrow and the crying out to God that we read in the Psalms from David was just beautiful and something that we can cling to when we see our children struggling and when we see our children failing, because we don't have to pray for them to be perfect. Um, we ourselves can take comfort. We don't have to be perfect. But when our children see us repenting of the things that we do that grieve the Lord and that grieve us as a result, that's powerful. And that's modeling the heart of David for them. When we see them struggling and falling, we don't have to worry that they're hopeless or they're lost causes. We can pray for the heart of David, that they would see their sin for what it is, that they would turn away from it and just keep going forward, keep moving forward with that desire and that drive to live their lives as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, that that would be their act of worship. So being grieved to the point of repentance for their sin, I think is at the heart of this, at the heart of David. So our prayer today is for them to just hunger and thirst for God above all else and to be grieved when they do sin, but to have hope and, and excitement to move forward beyond that because they believe that God is a God of redemption, that God is a God who provided his only son as a living sacrifice um, or as a sacrifice to, to pay the penalty for that sin and to really believe that and to receive the gift in its fullness so that they can walk forward in power and not in that, um, the sorrow that leads to death, but a godly, holy sorrow that leads to repentance and life and moving forward. So let's pray. Father God, we confess to you that sometimes our prayers involve hoping and wanting our children to be well-behaved, to be obedient, to be good on the surface. And sometimes if we're really honest, sometimes those prayers are so that others will think well of them and think well of us as parents. God, we forget that our, our primary concern needs to be their heart condition. And for that, we just ask for your forgiveness. God, we thank you that 
there are no lost causes in your kingdom. We thank you that even the greatest in the kingdom of heaven is the least of these on earth and that there is no one that is righteous, that all of those righteous acts are like filthy rags without Jesus. And all of those filthy acts can be washed away because of the righteousness of Jesus. Thank you, God. We thank you for ourselves and we thank you on behalf of our children because there is hope. There are no lost causes. We lift our children up to you today, God. We pray not for perfection. Today, we're not even praying for the the actions that come out of them. We're praying for their heart, God, that at the deepest core of who they are, that they would have the heart of David, that they would be grieved deeply by their sin when it happens, but that they would be grieved to repent and to turn from it, not to dwell on it, not to wallow in it, but to walk forward in power and in fullness of life, God, because that is what Jesus died for, that we're no longer slaves to sin, that we can fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame. God, that they would scorn the shame of their filthy act that they would scorn any kind of condemnation, that they would, they would reject it and turn from it and walk toward holiness and righteousness and, and get up every single time with hope and with purpose and with just as much passion to live for you as living sacrifices no matter how many times they fall, God, every single time they would, they would get up with just as much passion, with just as much um, hope that they can live for you. God, we thank you that you're a redeemer, that no pain is wasted, no sin is wasted. We are more than conquerors. God, you would take hold of our children today, God, even the ugly, sinful parts of their lives. God, we pray that that you would take the things that the enemy would intend for evil and use them for their ultimate good. Thank you, God. We pray for that heart of David in each one of our children, that you would plant in them a deep love for you that would grow day after day and a deep hope in the redeeming work that Jesus did on the cross. God, we pray that you would protect them from despair when they do fall. Though the righteous fall, they will fall, God but that they would grieve their sin in a way that leads to life and not death. Father, thank you that you've already done that. You're already the victor. And so we just pray that over them, God, in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen.